Hi again. We're in Nelson Barber, Charles T. Russell, The Three Worlds, or Plan of Redemption, page 120. A new subhead, Elijah the Prophet. Now we get deep into types and antitypes. Behold, I will send you Elijah the Prophet before the great and dreadful day of the Lord, and he shall turn the hearts of the fathers to the children, and the hearts of the children to their fathers, lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. That is Malachi 4, verses 4 and 5. The coming of Elijah must precede the day of the Lord, but his work belongs to that day. Jesus says, Elias truly shall first come and restore all things, Matthew 17, 11. And the restitution of all things does not begin until the return of Christ, whom the heaven must receive until the times of restitution of all things, that's Acts 3.21, a very big text in Russell's books later. Hence, the work of Elijah does not begin until after the personal advent of Christ, the event that ushers in the day of the Lord. At the first advent, Christ came ostensibly to establish his kingdom with the fleshly house of Israel, to whom alone he was sent. But in the day thy walls are to be built, in that day shall the decree be far remote. This is a a very obscure text. I don't think they use it anymore. That's Micah 7, verse 11. The kingdom of God was taken from them, and the other half of Zion's warfare comes in. The walls referred to was their salvation. In that day shall this song be sung in the land of Judah. We have a strong city. Salvation will God appoint for walls and bulwarks. But this will be realized only in that city which hath foundations. In the shadowy sense in which the kingdom was offered to the children after the flesh, in just that limited sense, John the Baptist was the Elijah. Christ, in speaking of John, says, And if ye will receive it, this is Elias, which was for to come. Matthew 11, verse 14. Here it is clearly made conditional. If you receive it, this is the this is the Elias. If not, he is not the Elias. And they did not receive it. Hence, when asked, Art thou Elias? John could truly say, I am not. John 1, 21. That Elijah, the names are the same, one is from the Hebrew, the other the Greek, was only a mere type. And that the prophecy does not point to him in person is clear from the fact that conditionally, John was the Elijah. And yet John, even if they had received him, was still the son of Elizabeth. But Gabriel, in Luke 1.16, makes it clear. He shall go before him in the spirit and power of Elias, to turn the hearts of the fathers, etc. Hence the real Elijah, who, or whatever he may be, will be the antitype of Elijah the prophet. This, like many other prophecies, points in the letter of the text to the type, and in the spirit, or real meaning, to the antitype. And it can be shown that the church of the firstborn, Christ and his body complete, is the true antitypical Elijah. I shall read that again. It can be shown that the church of the firstborn, Christ and his body complete, is the true antitypical Elijah. He shall turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the hearts of the children to their fathers, lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. Here is the alternative. If the Elijah brings about this happy reunion of the family, a blessing results. But if he could or should fail, as John the Baptist failed, then a curse must be result. And that this turning of the hearts, etc., refers to something more than the Jewish nation, is evident from the extent of the curse in case of failure. But it is written, In thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. Hence the real Elijah shall not fail, nor be discouraged, till he hath set judgment in the earth. Of John it was said, But I say unto you, Elias has come already, and they knew him not, but have done unto him whatsoever they, li they listed. Likewise shall also the Son of Man suffer of them. That's Matthew 17, verse 12. But to the antitypical Elijah they will not do as they list. In that, he that sitteth in the heavens shall laugh, the Lord shall have them in derision. Yet I have set my king upon my holy hill of Zion. As the restitution is to result in the good of the human family, and it is only through the restitution that all families of the earth 
are to be blessed in Abraham and his seed. And this work of restoring all things is the Elijah work. It follows of necessity that the Elijah and the seed are one and the same. And that Christ, head and body, the one perfect seed, is alone competent for the work. And that it belongs to him, no one can doubt. Hence all ideas of a personal Elijah are from some other than divine origin. And the least in the kingdom of heaven, that is of that body which is to constitute the real Elijah, is greater than John the Baptist. But it may be asked, if the gospel church with Christ as its head is the real antitypical Elijah, who is to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children, and the children to their fathers, and restore all things, is not that work being accomplished during the gospel dispensation? Let Christ answer, Suppose ye that I am come to send peace on earth, I tell you nay, but rather division. For from henceforth there shall be five in one house divided, three against two, and two against three. The father shall be divided against the son, and the son against the father. But when he has perfected his church, he comes not to bring division, not to set the fathers and children at variance, so that a man's foes shall be they of his own household, but to speak peace. And of the increase of his government and of peace, there shall be no end. So it's pretty obvious what's being set up here. Christ and the, and the complete body or seed of the woman are the Elijah class. And of course they continued that thought after Russell's death. Long, it was still being taught in the days I was baptized back around 1970-71. It was still being taught that there was an Elijah work and Elisha work. This type and anti-type, of course, has apparently, apparently been officially repudiated now, but it's way too late. It's, it's already done its, its work. And this idea that the Elijah class must be in heaven before 1914, well, we've already spoken to that. And that they play a part in the, not just in the restoration of all things during this period of Christ's invisible presence, but that they play a part in the atonement. So one of our videos in, videos in the series, Have Jehovah's Witnesses Ever Been God's Organization, deals with that specifically. The, the 144,000 are, are to participate in the atonement, and therefore they must be in heaven in order for the benefits of the atonement to be manifest among mankind. And that would happen, according to the teaching of Russell, by 1914. So put that video up along with the playlist, that whole series, have Jehovah's Witnesses ever been God's organization? And next time, more types and anti-types.